This is 101 on Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. Thank you for watching. On this episode, we are one-on-one -on -one with the man who is saddled with the responsibility of providing leadership and strategic direction for the achievement of the vision of the Nigerian Railway Master Plan, the Managing Director of Nigeria Railway Corporation, Mr. Fidel Uhiria. He is a professionally qualified electrical engineer with significant achievements in the field of electrical, mechanical signaling, telecommunication, ICT installation, maintenance and repair of electrical equipment and rail transport since 1988. His extensive industry experience covers the design, development, installation and supervision of many multi-million naira projects from inception to completion. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Hira. It's my pleasure of being here. I'm also well done on the job you and your team are doing on the Nigeria Railway um, transportation system and of course to the Minister of Transportation, Roti Amechi. If you don't know, you actually think he's just the Minister of Railway because he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's very interested in that area. So exactly. we're certainly not where we used why? to be. Okay, right, tell us. Uh, he's interested in the well-being of the downtrodden. Okay. And rail been for everybody. Mm -hmm. Before night, it was taken to be for the destitute. Those who enter and go to Kano, from Kano back, spend four or five days en route with rickety coaches. But you look at it and say, no, it should not be like that. And he devoted his time. Mm -hmm. And when he took over, it was live. He came straight to the railway compound, not following the normal route that he should come as officer. He dropped at the gate and walked in and took a tour of the facilities. Mm. He want to be close to the people, the ordinary person, and they get to as much people as possible. Okay, so definitely we were not where we used to be five years ago. I mean, there's a functioning. <laughs> it's the progress is the progress is massive. So, how would you rate the level of impact of um, this progress on the economy? I would say we are still coming gradually. We are still building, but the impact is massive. You see, there is nothing, we are over 100 years old. I don't, I don't like using the word abandoned or dilapidated mm -hmm. because as far as you still have human beings in the system, it's very, I, don't, I don't think it's godly to describe uh, the place as abandoned. We, we are not well positioned. So when he came, I have to tell him, if you are to make impact, you have to make meaningful investment. Because you don't compare a trader who buys one match and be selling it temp maybe one one to an individual, somebody who has a carton of match box to sell. The turnover is never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. At the time, the highest budget we had was 50 million, and that was f to upgrade the law library. Recently, we started having what we call annual budget. Mm -hmm. We provide service, but the impact on the various commercial activity and economy which you cannot quantify in terms of Naira and Kobo dollar and cent, is enormous. Mm. Now that we are modernizing, and I also believe because you say you are modernizing, you throw off what you have when you have not reached every part of the country. We should keep the two going because if you plan to have a modern house mm -hmm. and you say that you have not built it, you have laid foundation, you demolish your parents' house. And maybe by the time you come home, you'll be sleeping under the tree. So uh, uh, the knowledge we are gaining from the old will take us to the new. Mm, talking about gaining knowledge from the old, taking us to the new, um, the old narrow gauge lines link every part of the country. Are That's, we going to see yeah. um, refurbishing of that, or is it going to be a case of demolishing totally? No, no, no. As we go along, thank God, government still provides some funding for us to keep on keep us afloat. Mm -hmm. We have to buy what we call ballast the stone to refill the track. That is what cushion the impact on, on, on the rail. Mm -hmm. We have to still buy the spare parts and we have to still buy some locomotive and wagons to ensure that that route. Because if you don't run it, people will vandalize it as mm -hmm. we are experiencing in the East. So, and not until with modernization, because it was a state 25 years uh, government strategic uh, plan that was to say, okay, maintain the old one, ensure it's functioning well, build a, a new one, eventually transfer to the new one. 
we are almost close to 25 years, nothing happened. But now, they, they have the will and the interest to ensure that we move ahead. Mm -hmm. That's why when they came, they did not waste time. Even without understanding the system properly, they, the government and the minister put enough energy and ensure Kaduna Abuja was delivered. Yeah. And no, people listening to us today, people talk about it today. Before night, it was not like this. Because you have Kaduna Abuja functioning. Okay. You have governors, senators now riding or want to ride on train. The heartbeat, or what I call it, the, it will be the Lagos Ibadan when we start. You know the movement of people from Lagos to Ibadan, from north. Mm -hmm. So if you get to Ibadan, and that's five hours you spend between Lagos and Ibadan, will be out. The load from container, the containers we are moving, you see, cannot be broken into pieces. It's on, luckily, the minister ensured that a dry port is being developed in Ibadan. So when we do that, a lot of those containers, instead of every truck coming from Kaduna, coming from Sokoto, coming from Maduguri into Lagos, some will stop at Ibadan to carry their load. Mm. And if, as I tell people, people, if I take a train, like say the one we run on the, presently on the narrow gauge from, Kano, from Lagos on Friday evening, we then get to Kano on Saturday night if there are no pro breakdown. But you, there is no way a trailer will leave Lagos and get to Kano before Tuesday. Give us a brief um, overview of the master plan when it comes to Nigeria Railway Service. Where are we going to and what's the plan now? Okay. I always like to stop from what we, people we know. Mm. You see, people, if, if you are cooking, they want to know what you are cooking. So the go, our plan is to ensure that we get to all state capitals of the Federation, get to potential productive centers, mm -hmm. ensure that we get to the seaports, and ensure where farm produce will get passed through. That is the major uh, plan mm -hmm. for the government. And you cannot do it. No one particular regime can finish it, because the fund required to develop it is enormous. As they say, the, the, the soup you want is as you put your money, you will eat it. So if you are using $5 million per kilometer, that is the track of type you will get, and that is the type of speed you will get. We are trying to go at average speed of 150 kilometers per hour, and if we do that, we ensure, because of the population and the size of the economy in Nigeria, it's good enough mm -hmm. because a lot of study was done before we arrived at that. Now, talking about the pandemic and the efforts to at least curb the virus from every sector, um, there was an announcement that um, said the, on 29th of July, Kaduna Abuja Railway would resume. And of course, it has resumed, right? But you also said that the e-tickets wasn't going to be ready at that resumption. Yes. What's the progress with the e-ticket? That we are, Minister have set up a steering committee to be headed by the PAMSEC and the technical committee to be headed by myself. So the technical committee we are meeting, we are, you know, it's a PPP arrangement. Somebody is bringing his money to invest in and we are dotting the T's and, uh, uh, to ensure that the it's company okay. is not going to lose its money and we are not going to lose our money okay. and to ensure that we have that level playing ground. So they are moving by next week to Kaduna and Buja to start, in, in, you have to properly uh, ring fence so that you have a control exit to the platform and uh, entrance or departure to the platform. So that the e-ticketing you have, we, there should be some restriction that permits you to enter the platform to board your train. Mm. So, so how long are we looking at for this to uh, be? With the meeting we had yesterday, they said two months, they will start initial deployment. The okay. IT is the... It's, it's not just to do e-ticketing. You can do that under that one hour. You download a software. So you have to know how do you protect the earnings? How do you ensure that you are, you are, you are, the, what you are doing is it's not... People are not going to be hacking into it. And... Also, that when you have it, people will not jump into the train. You have to protect all those things. There are hardwares and softwares. Okay. So, and things, some certain items have to be imported. Not until you get 
the approval and we got it in March. Okay. By the time we started talking, the COVID came in. I know for the first two months it was completely locked down. So give or take in the next two months we in should... In the two months we start seeing there is some, I won't say full implementation, implementation. Okay. but it will be somewhere. All right, let's go on a very quick break and when we come back we'll carry on this conversation. Welcome back. This is C101 on Plus TV Africa. Um, so before we went on that break, you were talking about the availability of e-tickets. E -ticket. And yeah. in the next two months, we should be looking at some form of implementation. Yeah. So let's look at um, our assembly plant at Kajola. So late last year, Vice President Yemi Yoshibajo was there for uh, what we call the official groundbreaking. And he made mention that this is going to create about 5,000 jobs. Yeah as well as other benefits. Now, how soon is this going to be possible and what's the progress on ground? Okay. They have cleared the area and uh, I, I, I don't like talking about this virus, putting up in a lot of things. As we speak, even the contractor, you know, it, it's not a contract. Mm -hmm. It's what you call uh, social responsibility. The minister has to force it out from it. So if we give you so so number of wagons, so so number of locomotives, so so number of coaches to manufacture, we expect at least if you do 50 percent in your country, the remaining 50 percent should at least be assembled in Nigeria. And we want that facility to ensure that that 50 percent is assembled. And it's before now, we're putting pressure on them to ensure that thing is done. So they have got in the site. They have cleared the site. The what is left is for them to bring in the, because they have to build the workshop. So that, that's where we were before the lockdown. So we, we've been, we have met twice on the way to bring them back to site. Nobody wants to die. And, uh, I would not be surprised if a place that has been uh, graded would have grown by three now, because okay. I have not been there since March. All right. So the, it's not only that, you know, the university is also coming up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's part of the responsibility we expect the company to provide. We know at least you say you are doing this. You must make profit. Let that some profit reflect on our people. Okay. So um, let's talk revenue. Perhaps maybe the controversial China loan as well, <laughs> right? Um, NLC revenue is estimated to be about 120 million monthly. And the running cost is about 90 million. And from what we hear, it's expected that about 30 million goes back to an account that is created to service this debt, right? So, following the shutdown, we also know that about 766 million was Without lost, problem, yeah. right? Now, what will be the impact of this loss on servicing this debt? It's not, you see, <laughs> I'm not an expert. I don't pretend to be an expert in dealing with finance. Okay. Uh -huh. As you said, I'm an educational engineer and I've been there. Mm -hmm. But I've done some management courses and I've been treating contracts and or whatnot. It, 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 the, what we have with Chinese is government to government. It's not Nigerian Railway Corporation or Ministry of Transportation to government. Okay. Uh -huh. We've been attending what you call a, a Chinese Africa Focal uh -huh, Forum for Africa and Chinese. Every head of state goes to that meeting once a year. Maybe this year COVID has prevented people from going. Okay. And Chinese said, okay, we'll make this pool available for developing nation, a nation from Africa. It's not left for you to tap in, to defend how that thing is going to, to impact on people. They, 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 it's not today. This thing has been on since 2006. And uh, it's not tied to real we'll be able to pay back. You, can swear how is the Ministry of Transportation going to pay back? Or how is the presidency going to pay back? It's country to country. So it's not tied to what railway end. As I said earlier, railway is providing a service. If you want to look at it and say it's going to be able to break even to pay back, I don't think it's... So it's a loan that has to be paid back by the country, not by... Nigeria no, railway no, no, no. service. So, but we try to discipline ourselves and say, sure that let us also be making a contribution, mm -hmm. even if it's 2%, 1%. Okay. It uh, has to be uh, like that. Otherwise, if it's that money spinning, the government don't need to get involved. Hmm. Uh, it's like water. 
you can't pay enough for water that comes to your house. Mm. There are things God has provided free. And as I tell people, after God, you have government to organize the life of a country. Hmm. Some stakeholders <laughs> might not agree with you. Well, let me yeah. read this one to yeah. you. In a recent interview, former external affairs minister, Professor Bola Jiakinyemi, yeah. said, and I quote, yeah. what is the point of signing an agreement for Chinese to build a railway system with the terms paid within 20 years when the volume of people traveling by railway in your country cannot sustain the railway system? If the income generated by the railway system can generate the loan, then go ahead. But if you know you will be unable to repay the loan, then don't go into it. Now, based on this submission by the professor, <laughs> do you share <laughs> any part of the concerns is he, is raised he? so far when it comes to these loans? It, it, it's apart from age, mm -hmm. I can say it's a professor okay. of a particular area. Okay. Uh, it cannot be a professor of rail transport. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, do we invest money? It was Minister of Western Affairs. Do Nigeria money? Nigeria invest money in Eastern Affairs matters. If you have four children, mm -hmm. one will be very, very successful. Mm -hmm. One will be, the other one may be average. The other one is not average. The cost of the problem we have is that that very successful one should take the problem of the one that is not successful. Okay. Everybody will be. Responsible. When that very successful one ignore the one that is not, that's when he's scared to go to the village. You see, develop what? How do they do it? You say they are capitalists. Mm -hmm. I know today, if you're an American, you cannot say I cannot go to school because there is no opportunity for me to go to school. Who makes that possible? Government. Okay, I have a private co company in Europe, for instance. I have invested. It's going down. I said, I want to close. Government said, don't close. Instead of you close, we'd better give you this money. Why? Because if, if you employ 100 people and they're out of job, government have to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So, APRE is a mass employer of labor. labor. It mm -hmm. creates job for people. The producers have to produce. You have to move raw material to site of production. You have to move finished product back to market. And the people enjoy those uh, uh, facility. So you have people like MPA, Nemasa, they are the port. If you come with a ship, you collect revenue. You have rev what you call revenue collecting agencies. You understand? If 20 ships come, if there is money to collect from that ship, you collect. How will those uh, raw materials go to the industry? How will the finished product come to the market? I don't, you get, you get so my question. you correctly. You're saying this should not be based on the revenue yeah. that the railway commission can make. It's about the impact that it generates oh, yeah, to right. every uh, sector. Yes, on, the the, on, the, on our industrial growth. Okay. Who, who, you people have been talking mineral resources in the mid, mid, uh, uh, what do you call it now? In the center, uh, uh, like uh, Benue, Kogi, you have a sort of deposit, deposit this, that, that. Mm -hmm. uh, See, some people come to us and say, okay, we want to move coal. But by the time they do the economy of moving by road and this, the discovery will not pay them. They go. Hmm. But if you have a real link, you, 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 they will they'll be encouraged to do that. And that thing will develop. Do you understand? It will not put light on those people. So are you saying because <laughs> the villa cannot earn the money to to? have a villa, we should not have a government. Okay, let's go for another quick break. But when we come back, we'll carry on this particular conversation. This is 101 on Plus TV Africa. Before we went on that very quick break, we were talking about the China-Nigerian loan and the controversies, mm -hmm. right? So um, the Minister of Transportation, Ruth Miyamichi, has um, said that the National Assembly probe may frustrate Chinese um, loan from the real project. Now, in explaining this, he went further to say that we have already applied for $5.3 billion to mm -hmm. execute the rail from Ibadan to Kano, and also about to apply for about $3 billion for railway between Port Harcourt to Medjugorje. Now, if this probe continues, according to him, especially from the NAS who approved the initial loan um, um, as well, then that might scare away the Chinese. Do you share in this sentiment at all? It's, it's a straightforward thing. Okay. 
I don't want to call it a problem. I think it's a query for them okay. to understand better. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't think the minister will hesitate to provide the necessary for that affect him. Uh -huh. Even when you talk about the PPP arrangement, the first thing they ask for is sovereign guarantee. They want to ensure if even individual business people ask for sovereign guarantee to ensure that if what we are doing by any design, it did not work, I should get my money back because no, there is no further Christmas. So I would want us to check very carefully. Uh, I watched the minister yesterday was saying, okay, give me your alternative. You know, we always identify a problem. Mm -hmm. Nobody talk about the solution. Mm -hmm. Do we need the rail in this country? Yes or no? For me, yes. Not because I'm the MD. Because Nigerians need to move safely. All over the world, you cannot say there is an industrial growth without me so moving those things. So I will appeal that we should cooperate and ensure we have this thing. But if you do it now, you are not repeating it. Mm -hmm. Our children will not repeat it. They will enjoy the, the benefit. They will only to make sure that they maintain it and the cost of maintenance is not the cost of building. Okay, but well, looking at it from experience yeah. with your position yeah. and as a citizen of Nigeria as well, yeah. do you think there is a possibility that we will get to that point where we cannot pay this debt? And do you fear the consequences at all? Where we cannot pay the debt? Mm -hmm. You see, in every budget year, you have what you call uh, uh, what, uh, service uh, 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 of debt every year in Nigeria's budget. So they will continue to carry it. So why won't you pay the debt? And if you, we don't pay, that's why it's okay. What is the next thing? Have we gotten uh, we borrowed money and uh, former president Baba Basanjo was able to get some waiver. So the, the, the nation is... <laughs> Are we looking at getting a waiver as well for this one? I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying okay. at worst. Okay. The, the, okay. So the, no, no government wants to indelibly uh, hurt another nation. Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing well, there's a limit you can say don't come to my country. Okay. Because we are human beings. I don't want to say because we are blessed. We have men that can manage this economy. And according to my father, he said before he was born, there has never been any government that said we have enough fund. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There is no going to be no fund, even if oil is $2 million today, even in your house, yourself. So if you, have, if you are looking for 100000 if you get it the next day, that problem of 100000 is not the problem. We see other problems. So also you apply to a nation. Do you get it? We, I don't see why we should not service the loan. I'm not scared whether we can pay back. This Nigeria for God crying out. It's good to know at least about ninety million dollars has been paid so far. So if you want to say something to those who are really see, see, the, the, see, the person give, if you come to me now. Okay. Before I, I became MD, I was looking for a car loan from a bank. They would say come to they come to tomorrow. Immediately they had that MD, they line up. Say hey, we can give you house loan. We can give you this loan. So also no country, they will do their due diligence. No, is this country, we are giving him seven years, so, 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 ten, ten. In seven years, where is he going to be? Okay. Do you, you understand? Mm -hmm. He will not just come. They have done their studies too. Why is Nigeria getting? Another country is not getting. So we are alone. We work. should be positive. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's talk about what we are real. The project has probably seen longer days in construction than. Um, <laughs> But now, finally completed. So, um, and we hear that the people are eager to start using them, this service. How soon would that be possible? At least that is closer to me. Mm -hmm. And by the time people, I don't pretend. I will, be ha I will be happy to see that we can move from Wari okay. to Itakbe. At least it's closer to east, it's closer to south south. Nobody stop. You can click on Monica to Agbo and come to Abuja because the plan is to link very soon. It takes to Abuja, and that gets you to Kaduna. And if all these things are resolved, we get the loan. Kaduna will be linked to Kano. Ibadan will be linked to Abuja. 
So you, you can come from Wari, you can come from Port Harcourt and join the train. So we have received 10 coaches already at Agbo as we speak. We are trying to move two locomotives from where we call Papalanto in Ogun State, where they kept them when they brought them. So immediately we get that, I think we will plan for the commission because it is worth celebrating. Mm -hmm. I think that place was jinxed and God has blessed us. Okay. And it is going to come alive. So how soon are we looking at where it's up with starting? So we hope within the next two weeks, okay. we want to call the locomotive okay. that will pull those coaches. And we tend to start with four trips a day. One taking off from Takbe, one taking off from Wari in the morning, and in the afternoon, they will return back. Okay. So we, before the end of August, we should have to start. We are running the timetable, we are running the fair, uh, we are planning the fair, and we submit to necessary approval and review. They will hope by the end of August, okay. the Takbe Wari will take off. That but we will not wait till it takes off, but we start to do our skeletal uh, movement to ensure that the, we, warm up, we warm the track and the vehicles. Okay, so um, finally, where do you see Nigeria's railway in the next 10 years? Is there a possibility of competing with the named best in Africa, South Africa, Tanzania? Are we also looking at inter connecting Nigeria and other countries via rail? There has been that before I joined railway. And to link on to? To? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I'm saying, what's the plan in the next 10 years? I've been talking about linking Ekowa with rail mm -hmm. so that somebody will move his goods from this. Mm -hmm. So people, like we are planning of uh, uh, linking to up north outside Nigeria. People say, why? So if you do that, their goods will pass through Nigeria and they will, Nigeria will earn money. Okay. That's why. So. I cannot talk for other countries. I know for Nigeria, if we continue like this, I don't, I'm not fighting that we do it so, so fast. You do it according to how we source front. But if you do it continuously, consistently, whether it's 100 kilometer, 200 kilometer, consistently, we will get there one day. Hmm. So we, we Rome, wasn't well, in a day. day. But at least we're not waiting another 30 years, right? Uh, no. If w w people have interest to develop, like day and night, the minister is talking about rail, dream about rail. Mm -hmm. So if we continue to have people committed, uh, you know the important thing? The important thing that presently, at least on the transport sector, really, people are putting personal interest. They have thrown that out. In this same system, there's a time we will advertise one work because of interest yeah. we cancel. So now but there's people willpower. Who pass nine, go, the overall interest of Nigeria mm -hmm. above their personal interest. Right. That's why you see this growth. Thank you, Mr. Okira, for your time. It's a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for watching. And of course, my name is Esther Godwin. To catch up on this conversation and all our exclusive content, do visit our YouTube channel, Applause TV Africa. And of course, do subscribe. Enjoy the rest of our program.